Good morning. Good morning. What a beautiful weekend that the Lord is offering and extending to us. This is a Friday. We thank God. This is the day. The day that we say, the day that brings joy, that we are also getting into a praise of some lusts, even that we may be able to find some refreshment over the weekend that we can be able to start a new day with joy. <laughs> but how many people are lusting? How many people? How many people take a weekend as a lust? How many people are finding true rest? It is very unfortunate that now we have become men and women that have become the beast of burden, the beast of burden, the beast of burden, that at least every hour we are burdened by the chaos and the chaos of this life. I found myself there. It's not easy. Every time you're learning up and down from east, west, north, south, call it learning up and down. And sometimes even try having time to rest, even a designated time to rest, you are not able to find that rest. And you see what we are happening, what is happening? It is creeping in us that we are becoming very, very, less, very stressed. Sometimes we start carrying very, very uh, difficult uh, emotional, psychological, and uh, physical challenges because it's like we are not finding time to last. Can I propose to you something that I am looking forward and taking it seriously? It is important to make a decision, a decision to keep off from this busy, noisy world. At least even in a week, that you try and make sure that at least you have, I'm not even asking a whole day, but even taking like three or four hours out of the busy schedules of this life. Because these things will not never come to an end. I can tell you, take it for me. The life will not come into an end. And I can tell you, nobody is undispraisable. The truth is sometimes you imagine that that office you're working as if the, the, it cannot continue unless you're there. And the, sometimes it's good to be there. You cannot as come, as, uh, abscond your job but sometimes you can put away the noises of the world. At least when you go to rest, even in the evening, you can keep off your cell phone. Because let me tell you, something that is not allowing us to rest, there are people who are staying with their phones even all through the night, all through the night, on TikTok, on Facebook, on Instagram, on every man, call it. And it's like they are on. They have no time even to sleep. And therefore, we continue in unknowingly, we continue piling, piling uh, sleep, piling uh, unlessness, piling, and then at least sometimes it blows up. Before it blows up on us, it is important to make a decision. Please hear this, hear this. If you lose your health, it is you that you lose. Because if you are unable to do some of the things you are supposed to do because of your health, there are some people who come in, into your position to do them. Let me tell you, if you fail to go to your place of work because you are admitted in hospital for two or three days or even a week, you are managing company, your manager or even your director or even your supervisor will assign those duties to someone else. And by the way, nothing will stop. The conveyor belt of your department, the conveyor belt of your company, the conveyor belt in leadership will continue loading. Let me tell you, it is not going to stop because you are not there. And you should remember, you must take care of yourself. And therefore, as I enter into the word of God, especially this weekend, can you make a decision to be able to look and specifically ask for times off, even through your phone? Because you can never learn away from your responsibility as a parent. You cannot learn away at your place of work and the times that you need to work. But you can also find less out of your cell phone. So that at least the time to sleep, you sleep. The time to rest, you rest. The time to talk with your family, you talk. The time to talk with your husband or your wife, you talk. And the time to talk with people who are near you, that matters to you, who you fall back to, that you continue making and meeting that relationship because it matters. Now, let's continue with what you have been doing this, this month. This month, we are talking about God and money. God and money. God and money. And we are picking up a theme how we can worship God with our wealth. Worshiping God with our wealth. Because honor, that's what we said. Giving respect, weight to God. And especially on things, on things that are, uh, on things that can honor and worship the Lord. And therefore, we talked about principles. Number one, we were able to talk on Wednesday about the principle of paying our tithe. Giving God the first and the best. Number two, yesterday we talked about being able 
to pay out our debts. Debt. In other words, we are talking about financial management and managing our debts. So that as we manage our debts in a prudent way, it also brings worship and praise to our God. Today, I want to talk about giving. Giving. By the way, giving is one of the known ways. And it's an amazing principle of worshiping God. And especially we are wealth. Did you ever know, and I want to remind us, that God in his nature is a giving God. And for him to be worshipped and to receive true worship, he always expects and desires that we may be able to be willing to carry a giving attitude, that we are willing to give away and share because the secret of receiving is giving. God demonstrated this when he wanted to bring back and be able to bring back the world back to himself, the mankind that fell in the Garden of Eden and they left from his presence. And God, in his plan to restore man back, he used the wisdom of giving. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave. You can imagine his only, the precious gift that he had, his son, he gave him away. But the Bible says when he gave him away and he gave his life, also Jesus, in the same way, in the same, in the same wisdom, the same attitude, and the same grace, he gave away his life on the cross. You know what? And through the cross, he was able to bring back the whole world back to God. Giving is receiving. And the principle of true worship about our wealth is when we are willing to give our wealth to God, to God's agenda, to God's purposes, to God's missionary and work, to God, even giving it to people that needs because God makes us Remember, when we are giving, by the way, we give alms. We are giving because God will not come and deliver a packet of unga to my struggling neighbor. He believes and he has trusted me that the much he has put in my hands, I am, can be honest and faithful enough and even godly enough that I can be able to take one packet of unga, even if I have a whole bundle, but one packet of unga and share it with my struggling neighbor. But how many times, how many times do we open our eyes to the needs of the people around us? While God has blessed us, trusting us that these people will find God's love and God's grace even through us. And therefore, this day I want just to remember and to remind ourselves that it's important that we may be able to give. And I just want to lead a verse in the book of Col Colossians chapter 3 and verses 23. Uh, it is a verse that all of us know. But can you listen to what the Bible says? Colossians chapter 3 and verses 23. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Now, I want to pick that because that was an encouragement of Paul to the church of Colossae. And one of the things that he was encouraging the church is that they get to a place that when they do what they are supposed to do as Christians, they are not doing it unto men that they may realize that they are tools in God's hand. They are representative of God. In fact, they are Christ ambassadors, and that they are representing God in their vicinity, in their areas, in their environs, and even on positions of leadership that the Lord has raised them and the platform in which that God has been able to prepare. And he reminds them that there is wisdom. There is wisdom of understanding that God expects them, that they serve with diligence, willingly, and they are supposed to do it with all their hearts. Now, allow me to say this. Giving is an act. And I can tell you, it's an act of doing what is right. And doing what is good and light is not easy. No wonder you remember that Paul also in the church of Galatians, chapter 6 and following, remember Paul telling the, the church, do not get weary, do not tire of doing what is good. Because if you don't give up, you're going to find, you're going to get even early what. And by the way, it's good to say this. It is important to know that the works of righteousness, 
good works. Godly works are not an easy thing to do. And I want to talk about three things. Number one, when you are doing good and when you are encouraged, as Paul tells us, that whatever we find ourselves to do, and especially when talking about giving as a principle of honoring God with our wealth, we must be disciplined. Now, discipline means we must be willing to remain disciplined on giving. In regardless of what? When we choose to give our tithes, we must be disciplined on giving our tithes. You know the devil? I have walked this journey of tithing and I can tell you, and it is not an easy journey. Can I shock you? We never grow over, always becoming mature, of being faithful to giving even our tithes. I have learned that every time I have to remind myself, I have to remind my mind that I must be faithful on this game. Because the truth is, sometimes even you do things, like some of the things that you do, you even put uh, an order, even you are able to give an order even on your employer, that even as you get your salary is already, the tithe has been separated. But also God brings other blessings from other ways. Then you find that already you have received other blessings apart from your salary. And then you are always required that you be faithful with what you have received. And I can tell you, by the way, I've also realized we must go beyond and grow beyond just the 10%. So that at least we always are the safe with God. That at least when God gives you, remember that even when you are giving your offering, when you are giving anything and even somebody wants some help, you don't just tack to whatever is like a 10% or whatever. By the way, I can tell you, God is supposed to help us to grow beyond just the, the legal, just the legal, that at least even in our giving, as we give our offerings, we give offerings that honors God. Allow me to say, this spring is paramount. Number two, persistent. It's like even as you give, you must be persistent in doing what is like in giving. By the way, you must be persistent. In other words, even when you feel that as if you have nothing, even that ritual you have, you are willing to give. Do you remember that uh, woman who was almost waiting to die together with his son? And Elijah comes, Elijah comes and says, you know what? Prepare some bread for me so that I can eat. And he said, I just, it's only the remaining fra and we will die with my son. But he said, but because you have asked, I'm going to do it. And that was the beginning of the divine provision on a difficult time. Can I tell you, brethren, if there is a secret of finding divine provision, it is sacrificial giving. Sacrificial giving. Can, I, can you get this? At uh, this season and time, is a very difficult time for all of us. But one thing I know, God has provided to his own people in a divine way. But the password has always been God has led people, made their servants, maybe men that are ministered by the servants of God, maybe men that God wants them to break the spirit of poverty and be able to come. He has always taught them and led them to a path of sacrificial giving, that they give even when they have ritual. And out of that ritual, God is able to multiply it because it's given with faith that even what I have remaining belongs to God. And even when I give to him, it's because I have faith. Because that sacrificial giving shows faith that even when I give all this, the only person I trust, I'm not trusting on my wealth. My trust and confidence is on the giver of the wealth. And I just want to say this as a parting shot. If there is anything that is so important, is to pray that the Lord may give us the grace, the grace of giving, the grace of giving sacrificially, the grace to understand that we are giving to the giver. In other words, it's like, even when I give him everything that I have, by the way, I can tell you for a fact, is that I have faith that he will still give me back and I'm not going to die of lack. And all the people that have given God sacrificially, they have never suffered lack. God always, always brings divine provision. And this provision is continuous. And I pray in the name of Jesus that on these difficult times of lace taxes, this difficult time of struggling economy in this country, these difficult times of every manner of commodities, even the basic commodities, lies in. One thing that we should not do, I have been encouraging the church and everybody that we should shun from a spirit of complaining. But you know what we can do? We can counterattack it in the spiritual way that we continue giving sacrificially to the cause of the kingdom. And God, in his own way, will divinely provide to us even on this difficult time. He has done that in the past. He is doing, he has done it to us. He is doing it now. He will continue doing. 
Not because we are not suffering lack, but because we have known the secret that giving is a principle of honoring God with our wealth. And as we honor God, God will honor us and God will continue to bless us. May the Lord bless you as you give and may the Lord grant you the grace, the grace of giving. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.